All right, guys, so we're going to talk about conditional probability today. So here, I'm going to show you how to find conditional probability mathematically. And conditional probability means the second means the second event happens after the first event. And the formula for this is the probability of a second event happening after the first event or given that the first event happens is the probability of A and B over the probability of the first event. And another way you can write that is the probability of this, and this is given that these two events are independent. All right, so that's how you write conditional probability. And this is always the second event, and this is always the first. And the letters may change, but just know this second event happens after the first event. Independent events are when um, two, well, no, let me not say that. Independent events means when the probability of one event doesn't affect the probability of the second event. All right, so let's look at, for those of you that never seen a deck of cards before, here's a deck of cards. This is called a suit of spades where these are called face cards, including the ace. And this is called the suit of hearts. This is a face card, including the jack, king, I mean, the jack, queen, and king. And the rest of these are just the regular number cards. Then this is the suit of diamonds. This is the um, ace. And then this is the king, queen, jack. And the rest are just regular number cards. This is the club. Some people call them hush puppies, but I think the common name for it is clubs. And this is a face card along with the king, queen, and jack. These are all face cards. Well, these are number cards, but these are face cards. There are 52 um, cards in a total deck. So the sample space here, if you're doing an experiment with a deck of cards, would be 52. And each suit has 13 cards. Okay? So now, let's go ahead and go to our questions. It says... Brandon selects one card at random from a standard deck of cards. Find the probabilities, explain, or show your reasoning. All right, so if he wants to, um, the, what's the probability that he gets a queen? So we have four queens here out of the 52 decks of cards. So our A, probability of getting a queen is 4 out of 52, which reduces to 1 out of 13. Okay, B, it says, what's the probability of getting a heart? Well, if you count, there are 13 hearts. So that's 13 out of 52 cards. And then part C says, what is the probability of getting a queen and a heart? All right, so you have a situation here. Here's how these two events is happening. You're either going to pull a queen out, and then after you pull that queen, you're going to multiply that by what is, what's the probability of me getting a heart given that I pulled out a queen. So that's your formula there. And here we're going to say that this equals to the probability of getting a queen is 1 out of 13 times the probability of getting a heart given that it's a queen first. So the probability of getting a heart would be one, and how many queens we have? Four. So that would be one out of four. 
and this would equal to, if I do the math, 1 out of 52. Now, I'm going to tell you what's cool about this. You could have just looked at these cards. How many queens, well, how many queens of hearts is in this card deck? That's one. And how many cards are in this deck in all? There's 52. So, we could have saw at the beginning that this was one out of 52. Now, all events don't break down this easily, but I wanted to show you how this formula works. And sometimes you have to rely on this formula instead. Okay. Okay, Brandon. Next question says, Brandon pulls out only the hearts from the deck and sets the rest of the cards aside. He shuffles the hearts and draws one card. What is the probability he gets a queen? So that means he must simplify this. He takes all of the rest of these cards out. Now, what's his probability of getting a queen when he only has 13 cards in the deck? So the probability of getting a queen would be one out of the 13 cards that he has left over from the deck. Okay, let's keep going. All right, this next one says that Jada rolls one standard number cube, then she rolls another standard number cube. So the question is, what's the probability that she rolls a five on both number cubes? So I'm going to call event A, first cube. And we'll just keep this going like this. And event B, second cube. And off the get-go, I know these two events are independent because whatever, if I roll the first die, it is not going to affect the probability of the second die. So this question is asking me for number one, define the probability of A. And then find the probability, and I'm going to multiply that by the probability of B. All right. So if I look here, the probability of getting a 5 on the first number cube would be 1 out of 6. And the probability of getting 5 on the second one is also 1 out of 6. And I can multiply these two events together because they're independent. So that's how I'm going to find their probability. And that's probability of compound events. So we get 1 out of 36. Okay, so that's the answer to number 1. Number two, it says, what's the probability that the second row is a five under the condition that the first row is a six? So I want to know what's the probability of getting a second row. So what's the probability of B given that the first event happens first? Okay, so this is conditional probability. So my formula from the beginning told me to do the probability uh, since I know these are independent events, I'm going to do the probability of A and the probability of B over the probability of the first event. That's my formula. I'm going to simplify this even more to make life simpler since these are independent events. I'm going to break that first two events up and say that's the probability of A times the probability of B over the probability of A. So I'm making life simple. So now I just need to break down my information. So we get the probability of the first cube, and that wants to be a roll of six. That's one out of six times the probability of getting a five. It's also one out of six over the probability of getting um, the first event is six, rolling a six, which is another one out of six. So here, look, y'all, this is back down to regular math. These one out of sixes cancel out, and we have one left over. So the answer is one out of six for number two. All right. So number three, let's go here. It says, what's the probability that the second row is a five under the condition that the first row is a five? So we're going to say the probability of getting a five over the probability of getting the second five. So we're still dealing with the same formula. So probability of, I'm gonna go ahead and write the short version of it over the probability of the first event. So here we know the probability of getting a five on the first roll is one out of six. 
the probability of getting a five on the second roll is also one out of six. And then the probability of getting a five on the first roll is one out of six. So we're back in the same situation. And this answer breaks down to one out of six again. Okay, so number four, let's go back up. What's the probability that the second row is not a five? Okay, so my two events here is the probability of the first row being a five and given that the probability of a second row is not a five. Okay, so let me write what A and B is here. A is a five, first is a five, and then B would be second is a five. But here we want the not version of it. So here's how you're gonna write this. You're gonna say the probability of A times the probability of not getting B over the probability of A. Okay, so, and I wrote this as a shortcut, guys. Instead of writing the and, I just broke it up since I know these events are independent. So the probability of getting a five is still gonna be one out of six. The probability of not getting a five is gonna be five out of six. So in other words, all the numbers that aren't the number five. So that's five out of six over the probability of getting a five, which is another one out of six. These two go away. And we're left with the answer as 5 over 6. Okay? Do we have a fifth question up here? Yep, it says, what is the probability that the first row is a 5 and the second row... What's the probability that the first row is a 5 and the second row is not a 5? Alright, that's the same question. So I'm going to leave number 5 alone. Alright, let's keep going. Do we have another one? Nope, that's it, guys. So go to Canvas and out to your practice questions for today, and I'll see you um, in on Zoom on tomorrow or later today if you're doing this earlier. And bye, guys.